And this is Ham Radio Now, episode, I have an episode number, 331. I wasn't going to make this a numbered episode. This is just going to be a quick Facebook thing, but I got a feeling it's going to take a little longer. Yeah. It's also bull session number nine. It, it could be an MCOM extra, but no, nope. get the title <laughs> too long. <laughs> so I am Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. And uh, I am David Goldenberg, W0DHG. And um, let's see. I guess you might as well do the ham radio now, brought to you by you. Let's uh, let's show you, Arvin. Um, there he is. There he is. Over your shoulder. And uh, there's my Arvin over my shoulder. Ham radio now is brought to you by you. If you enjoy the programs, hamradionow.tv is the place to go. So this is going to be a field day bull session. It's just kind of a throw together. We don't really have a lot of formal stuff to do, um, but we both went out, went out to field day. Uh, and by the way, uh, Glenn, um, Glenn Packer, KC1HOX, uh, was going to be on the show, and then we dialed him up on Skype. He didn't have a camera, and, and then he disappeared from Skype. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get him on sometime later on. Glenn, you're probably yep. watching now when uh, – when, when you've got a camera, because this is a television show. I know, you know, about yeah. half the folks get it as radio, but it starts as a television show. So uh, what did you do for field day? So um, Glenn's back in the room, it looks like. So, um, you know, usually we do a big setup here with the Aries LAX Northwest group, but because I was in Italy for 10 days and our um, – DEC was away. Uh, I went driving around, uh, visited a couple different sites, uh, ended up staying at uh, a, a 6 CV for a couple hours and even um, worked some PSK 31. Who, uh, so, what, what group is that? That's the uh, Caneo Valley Amateur Radio Club. They're in uh, Santa Barbara. They were 15 alpha. It was quite the setup. And actually, sent some video we'll take a look at in a bit. I think Glenn is back. Glenn, are Glenn's you back? Are you connected here? I'm can back. I hear you? All right. You should be able to hear me. Yeah. I can. Where'd you go? Uh, Skype uh, locked up on me, so I had to reboot the computer. <laughs> That's Skype. That's that Skype for you. All right. Well, then you can be part of the show because you're here. So you also did. Uh, to, to, well, Glenn, tell people who you are. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm uh, KC1HOX. Um, Glenn Packer from Connecticut and, uh, and, and tell people why you're here. And, and we it's awfully Glenn. quiet. Glenn's here because of field day. Well, he's here because we uh, stuck something on our Facebook uh, group that said, if you want to be a star, you want to join us as a star, um, then, um, push another button here, then, um, let us know and we'll, uh, add you to the show. And he did. And, and then, then there uh, were two, <laughs> but, he's, but he's having trouble. So, um, maybe we'll see if he, if he manages to come back, but, uh, we're, <clears throat> we're rolling. Yeah, we are. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what did yeah. you do, Gary? Well, I, uh, took a ride with, uh, the North Carolina section manager, Carl Bowman, W4CHX. And we, um, we traveled around, uh, I think, a total of 10 field day locations, mostly in western North Carolina. The farthest east we went was uh, uh, Winston-Salem, and we got out into the mountains, very pretty territory. Uh, he was going to do a tour as the section manager. He likes to get out and see as many field day sites as he can. Mm -hmm. And I just I tagged along with him and you know brought the cameras and stuff, and now I'm in the middle of editing all that. <laughs> I am never going to do another field production piece. <laughs> never. If you, you, if you catch of, me talking about doing a field production, just slap I'll, me. I'll remind you. Cause I'll remind you how many it, hours of, uh, of, uh, digital do you have to edit? I, uh, didn't even want to edit up. Uh, I, I have uh, lined up all the interviews and, um, cause we, at each site, I'd shoot some interview and then I would shoot mm -hmm. some B roll and, Yep. The interviews all lined up. I think they, they add up to about an hour or so. I tried to keep them okay. short. We, we got to the first one. We got to Winston-Salem. And uh, Carl was, <clears throat> was going to you know, like co-host the show with me. And then we had a couple of the, of the local guys. And everybody's 
well, I've got two microphones. Yeah. <laughs> two of these guys. And so we're, you know, passing mics back and forth. And and Carl takes over the show and he starts it off like it's going to be a 90-minute show at one location. <laughs> and I put on the brakes pretty fast. And it's like, no, we can't, we can't do a 90-minute show here. We can do a five-minute show here. Right. And, and at each of the places we're going to be. So he uh, he, he got in, in with the program pretty quick. So but he, he was great to ride along with. We also uh, fired up the Q-Mobile um, and, uh, and worked, I think, a total of 60 contacts because oh, that's great. you get out to one place. Were the places that you went to, were they all pretty close together? No. Um, one of them was about 20 minutes north. And then another one was about 15 minutes south and another was about a half an hour or south. Okay. So 10, 20 minutes and a half hour. Yeah. Yeah. Where we were going, a couple of the places were 30 minutes or so apart, but most of them were, were, um, an hour to 90 minutes apart. So we had a lot of time Mm -hmm. in the car Yep. and we would just drive, uh, uh, operate, um, and I recorded some of that, you know, some of the contacts. So you'll see a few of those uh, slipped in, in in between in that very pretty North Carolina mountain territory. And You work in the HF mobile? Yeah, uh, mostly 20 meters. And then on mm-hmm. Sunday morning, on Saturday, it was pretty much all 20 meters and on uh, maybe a little bit of 40 meters at the toward the end of the day. And then on Sunday, 15 was open with a uh, pretty good E uh, opening to uh, the Northeast and to the Midwest. So we made a lot of contacts on 15. That's great. That's great. And so we'll sh- I'll show some of those when I get the video. I'm going to try to get it finished to get online this weekend. So, you know, it's not that old. Yeah, when we were site to site, um, I've had problems with my um, quad band in the car. So I just worked a little bit of two meter um, simplex. There was a couple of folks on uh, calling frequencies here and there. And so I, you know, I gave out a couple of points. Yeah. Recorded. I logged. I logged him with my phone, but I'm not sure I'm submitting a log this year. I had Carl that, driving, I and I was um, logging and tuning. So all he had to do was you know pick up the mic and holler, mm-hmm. and uh, so that that was a good division of labor. Um, although he was um, he ran into some situations because field day is not his operation. He, he, he drives around and visits places. He doesn't get on the air. He does other contests and works a lot of DX. So it took a while to get in the in the, uh, the swing of, um, field day, the, the field day give and take. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and one of the things he was concerned about was the impression of distracted driving. Cause he's a section manager. Well, you're an EC, right. you, you've got an official position. You need to look, you know, look like you're upstanding and doing it all right. So he was kind of afraid that, that looking and you're operating well while, while driving on the air would be uh, um, a, an indication of some distraction. Glenn's trying to get back in here. Glenn, I am going to think. Yeah, maybe I'm not. Glenn, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you off till another day. So don't don't try anymore. <laughs> so did you um, did you log uh, paper log or computer log or I've got that mobile computer. It's a little gateway, yeah. uh, 11 mm-hmm. inch. And, uh, I brought in, um, and one MM plus. Okay. And it was an interesting experience. Uh, cause I, I set it up here. I've, I've run an N one MM many years in the past. So I set it up here in the shack and made a test file and, you know, logged a lot of phony baloney contacts. I think I used your call for some of the phony baloney contacts and everything was working fine. Mm-hmm. And then I set it up, a, a, um, set up a new file. <clears throat> I'm using the terminology wrong, not, not the way N1MM uses it. Maybe a new database is what they call it. Probably. And uh, that's what I was going to just boot up and start using. So I booted it up and it was in some other contest. It had oh. signal report stuff, <laughs> not. Field day something sections. that you had, something you had used previously? No, I never used this before. This is a brand new installation of uh, N1MM Plus. Okay, they've got a. I guess they, they've got an old classic version, something everyone's been using for years. And mm-hmm. uh, the plus is not that, not that much plus, as far as I could tell. It had, maybe had some other features. It, w- it was doing what I needed it to do for field day. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I couldn't figure out how to get back to field day. I couldn't find a, a, um, a menu position or button or, um, you know, item that said, what contest do you want to be? I want to be field day. Not whatever right. you're giving me. Whatever so, is on there. Yeah. I, I think, I think eventually, you know, just shut it all down, started it up again and, and tried fresh and it finally popped up with that window of like, what contest do you want to be operating? I, I mean, I, it sounds like I'm complaining about N1MM and I don't, don't really want to be doing that because he's, it's a free uh, program. Mm-hmm. He's put a lot of work into it and, and, and gives it away. And, extensive documentation that I did not spend very much time with because the first time I booted it up, it had this window that says, well, which contest are we going to be running? Click field day. And then that went away and I couldn't find right. it. Again. And I'm not even sure still where I eventually found it. We had a long discussion at uh, one of the sites I was at that, you know, you, you need a bunch of different kinds of skill sets and different people you need to have. You definitely need to have, you know, that skilled radio guy, but you also need to have the, the networking PC, database guy to be able to run all the logging software and get everything connected and hooked up. And everywhere I went, there was one of those guys. Yeah. I, I saw a f- one place in particular that had a very uh, extensive Wi-Fi network covering a pretty, you know, big field day area, you know, a thousand feet, but a pretty big field mm-hmm. day area. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, what did you see in the various places that you, that you went to? Yeah, you know, the, the most of the time that I ended up spending um, was at the Caneo Valley Radio Club, and um, they got a great, they got a big, huge, I think it's probably 10 by 20, or actually two 10 by 20 tents um, that they get from the uh, emergency managers, management service there that they borrow, and they run 15 alpha. So they had quite the setup. Um, they have a relationship with an elementary school out there, and so they take it over for the weekend, and you know, they fill the whole football field and, and a little bit more with uh, the um, the tent. And I don't know, it must have been three good sized towers and a couple of other little stand up things. And they just season and some they ran a lot of stuff. Oh, we got a break in here. In yeah, it's that that uh, it's that stupid fa- um, YouTube uh, autoplay thing. Oh. Let's see if I can make it make it go away. Go away, go away. And I can I can turn it off, but I want to be able to play it in a little bit. Which yeah, which I want one? it to come back later on. Yeah, there's the one that's it's going. That one. Stop it. Yeah, and and they just kind of they, they say. Evidently, you've had us sitting here on pause for a long time. Evidently, you wanted us to play. Us so, to play. Come on, play so, it now. So, so now we're going to play. Um, yeah. And uh, but we got some uh, we got some videos that ARL has gathered, news stories and stuff to play for you. Yeah, um, that's good too. Yep. Yeah. So, so, so you spend most of your time in one place. So I said, yeah, you know. Um, Saturday morning, uh, you know, we start in California about 11 o'clock and I'd take my son out to, uh, a hike, which was earlier, um, than that, about eight o'clock in the morning. And I knew they'd be setting up. So I thought I'd go over there and I know some of the guys, I wasn't sure they'd be there. And, um, none of the guys I knew were there, but I'll tell you, these guys were super welcoming. Come on in, join the club, uh, you know, take a look around. And, you know, I told them I'd, you know, shoot some, oh yeah, shoot some video, all all the stuff you want to do. Come back later on, work all night. They were, they were super excited, super awesome. Just don't try to ask, ask to run 20 meter sideband at two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, probably, probably wouldn't have been a good idea. So you Um, shot some video there, right? Yeah, I shot a little video. I I tried to shoot some more. I haven't had time to edit, but there's a couple minutes there. Yeah, Uh, let me, uh, let me run run that. that Now you got some audio with it some yeah kind of talking over over it a little bit again i was hoping to do that so those are the uh those are those uh military uh tents valley amateur radio club that's what uh what dayton could have used yeah those were great on the inside and uh by the by the operating part of the day that street was all full of cars Uh, if you can see Uh, the dipole in the background dipoles are hard to see you can barely see the wire yeah. And then there's there's one there. Another, nice beam, another beam there. And then on the far yeah, side behind that white band, the there's another one, but you can't see. It's too far back there. 
And those are old military uh, crank up area. Crank up masts. They got this great two tent shelter back to back, all connected up, that they get from the uh, the local county. Let's take you inside. And I don't know if so this is going to go inside. Here. Oh yeah. Can so you the, yeah. This is a uh, a quilt antenna. It's a 440. You know, 440 megahertz antenna that has been fashioned as a quilt. Uh, it's a Yagi, and it's got the uh, the requisite windings on the back. I don't know if that's going to catch on. So, Excellent. You know, it's the, this is the fun stuff about Field Day. You know, his wife did the quilt, and, and he put the end thing on there, and he was showing it to folks. And, you know, it worked. Sideband? FM on that? FM on this. Although it could, you know. Yeah. Without are, being a smart aleck, what is the sort purpose of, of the uh, quilt? Sort of like a slot antenna, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's I mean, it's kind of it's it's, it's like a flat beam, you know. Excellent. Instead of having it all laid out, I guess Excellent. I don't know. I'll come back. I'm gonna like I said. I'll okay, I can see on. that see now. Operation. Yeah. Okay, this is very so, W3AO like. Yeah. So that was, I think his name is oh, I went, Dave, I and he was the, uh, he's the IT guy who set up all the, they do um, N3FJP, and I think that's all I got. And then my battery died, sadly. Your battery died? The, on my camera. Wow. Because I had used it for something else. <laughs> oh, okay. And I hadn't had a chance to uh, to charge it all up. Um, but, uh, so... I was there early, and then I let them go back to setting up, and I had to go pick my my boy up. And we 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 tried to go in uh, west of Los Angeles at the Red Cross shelter at the VA. We tried to go there because I wanted to see what they had going on, and that was right about twelve twelve thirty. Um, but it was two guys in a pickup truck and a push up mast, and they were kind of running around, and I didn't want to bug them, so we we moved on um, to uh, Topanga Canyon, and there. Uh, EOC for the canyon area and um, they too were um, fast and furiously moving around there. They have kind of have a double wide trailer and uh, wasn't really an opportunity to shoot any video or anything and um, talked to a couple folks uh, but they were that, that's the place where you don't want to ask to operate 20 meters during <laughs> the afternoon because there were a lineup of guys there. Um, yeah. We're gonna make know, it. We're gonna know, make a full uh, media guy out of you uh, sooner or later. And yeah, we're working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah. I gotta get a. I gotta get a better microphone. I know. I realize that from recording through the camera. I gotta see if it'll even take an external microphone. Yeah. I, I was gonna talk if, to you before we got started, and we didn't really have time, so I'll just lay it out here, here it, on Facebook Live. Is that I'm gonna be gone yeah. for a lot of the end of August and uh, and much of September. Okay. And we will see if we can get you to the point where you can actually do a ham radio now show solo. Yeah. That would be cool. Well, I could, I could do it on Facebook live. I'm not sure how That's easy. else I would do it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, although you got to bring in a guest. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could monologue the whole thing. You know, that'd be, that'd be one thing. Uh, yeah, I could bring in a guest. We'll see. Yeah. Well, it's uh, you know, it, you spend the money for Wirecast or you spend the, the sweat equity for open broadcast for, studio. Okay. And, see, and which does the same thing as Wirecast, but doesn't cost a thousand dollars. Okay, well, we'll be doing the sweat equity thing. <laughs> so we'll get, it. yeah, and I'll you know I'll set you up with the the YouTube and uh, and the Facebook, and I think I think you're I think you got administrator privileges on the Facebook page. Yeah, I think, I think I do. Yeah, I think I do. We'll have to set you up for right. the, the YouTube. Well, we will let you down. We'll definitely do a yeah. show or two. And figure you can out a way to you make can run ham radio now totally into the ground. Yeah, so there'll be nothing left to pick up when I get back. Oh, Gary. I'm not Gary, going Gary. one place. So Cindy and I are taking a vacation, and then I've got a, a bike MS event, and um, and then heading out to St. Louis for the Tapper Conference. So, and they're all they're, all, they're those things back to back to cover back. back to back weekends with yep. a few days in between. Well, the vacation is is the whole time two weeks, and then the bike MS we just barely gotten back, and then heading out for that, which is a lot of fun. You guys are uh, going to some secret, undisclosed location for vacation. Yeah, yeah, Hawaii. Good. Okay. Awesome. Again, sounds like fun. Been been there, done that. Want to go do it again? 
Well, that's all right. Always, hey, as long as you want to do it again, then it'll be a vacation. Always something new to do. Cindy had looked at a couple of other vacation uh, possibilities that we were looking at. Um, and one of them was where you went to, to Italy. Mm-hmm. And um, timing, and she also <laughs> said something that was surprising. Hawaii is a lot cheaper. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it could be. We know where to go and what to do and all that. So, mm-hmm. so. you know, we did we did Italy on um on mileage and and Airbnb worked good for us because there's five of us. You can't get a single <clears throat> hotel room for five people anywhere. Yeah, um, but it worked out good. We so we need to um, hire your wife as our tour guide. She loves for, that. If we ever, go. but she has to go along though. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be the tour guide. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So and right now Cindy is in um, Paris. Oh, she was uh-huh. she had a business conference in Amsterdam. Okay. And she, and then she just tacked on a couple of days, climbed on the uh, the, the Eurail high speed train, and uh, she's got a friend in Paris. Mm-hmm. And they're going to go do a little bit of touristing around, and then she'll come back. Two hours from Amsterdam to Paris, <laughs> and they greet you with a beagle, and it's lots of fun. I've done that before. <laughs> I don't know about the beagle. Oh, they do. They greet you with a beagle. And and I told the kids that were on the train with me that stopped to play with a beagle, don't stop, don't pet the beagle, just keep walking. Oh, the the beagle is a uh, <laughs> yeah. drug yeah, sniffing exactly. dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't remember so, seeing don't, that. Don't don't stop. Don't play with the beagle. Just keep walking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We took the high-speed trains a couple times last year. We did um, we did a uh, trip down the, um, the Rhine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, river cruise, and then and ended up in Basel, Switzerland. A tiny little <clears throat> day in Switzerland. It, enough to say that I've been in the country. And then we took the high-speed train to Paris. Don't remember the Beagle. And then another high-speed train to London for a couple of days. Well, it, it was only if you come direct from Amsterdam that I think they have the Beagle there. Because, I think if you come oh, from because, other locations. <laughs> because of Amsterdam's you know, reputation yeah, for... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. If you come from other locations, I don't think they worry about it as much. Oh, there was hey, a man, an, I came un, from Amsterdam. Right. There, I think there was an unnumbered ham radio now episode of your trip. Yeah. Well, we did um we did an audio podcast of it. Okay. On the train. Just mm-hmm. recording, just literally recording into my phone with the phone mm-hmm. microphone and everything. And then I I added video of that. Uh video to that, although not a, not, you know, one for one, not show and tell because <clears throat> I didn't really have video for everything we were talking about. So yeah, it's back there in the episodes. So cool. I was well, talking, sounds to, like a, okay. I was talking about Carl, uh, worrying about, um, about the distracted driving, which yeah. it could look like, um, it, what, what he actually did was wh- whenever it was time to talk, if he was paying attention to driving, his operating procedure went went to hell because <laughs> yeah. he wasn't thinking about that. It's like he he did what what everybody should do when you are talking on the radio, and a driving situation indicates that you need to be paying all of your attention to driving the car. You just stop. The ham radio stops, which is a, a, I think a big difference between cell phones and everything else. Because people are wrapped up in their cell phone conversation. I've noticed this on cell phone conversations. And that takes more priority. But at least for me and for Carl and I think a lot of hams, the ham radio stuff, if I got to drive, I got to drive. You know, mm-hmm. let, we'll let the let the guy I'm talking to just wait for a minute until I get back. Yeah, and you hear that all the time here on Simplex and on the repeaters. You know, somebody goes away. Oh, they must have got a call, or oh, they must have done this, or yeah. Well, they must be navigating some intersection. Or as or as I say, apparently they stepped into an, into an open manhole. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> come back, please come back. You know, that's uh, when I was driving the couple stations that I worked um, on my phone. My phone's mounted on the dashboard, and I just turned the voice recorder on so that. If I were to turn in a log later on, I would have a good log because I don't want to write too. So I've got a record of it all. Again, I'm I'm not sure. I didn't make enough contacts on my own and I hadn't really planned to work Caneo Valley and ended up working there for probably about an hour um, on PSK 31, which I hadn't done before. It was a lot of fun. So there's a mode you might uh, add to your collection? You know, when we, um, I think the first day, I, first year I did field day it would be 2012. 
one of the guys at our field day site had it kind of set up off on the side and he was more doing go to and demonstration. And I don't think anybody else was taking him serious for that mode. Um, and you know, I think in the hour I must have racked up 50 or 60 contacts. It was, it was fast and furious. And the, even on Sunday morning, um, there were still a lot of stations out there that, that we were able to hit that weren't dupes. Yeah. It's so a pretty I good rate we'll for a PSK 31. Cause that's not yeah. a fast contact mode. It, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. I probably worked a little bit more than an hour, but, um, and who knows, I may inflate my numbers, a little bit. <laughs> but, but we had fun. It was cool. Nobody does that. No, nobody does that. Yeah. It was this big. Yeah. Oh, you can't see my hands. Wait a minute. I'll give you the full screen here. <laughs> the fish was that big. <laughs> All right. Uh, but, but it was really great. And, you know, like I said, when I went back there, they were, you know, super, super welcoming out at that site. And actually, all the sites, they were, you know, happy to see someone, anyone that they didn't recognize as a re regular member of, um, you know, of their club, that the Topanga guys. And, and again, I knew a couple of those guys and they were, uh, they were working on some kind of remote rig set up and I didn't want to stay too long and get in their way. They were working on a remote for field day? They were doing, they were doing some kind of remote, um, you know, I think what he's trying to do is he was trying to get into his desktop at home to get his, uh, the radiograms he set up, whatever oh, it was, okay. it, you know, it was, <laughs> yeah. Cause that a bunch of stuff happening. I don't think remote operation is kosher for field day. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 They, whatever it was, they were trying to get to something and it wasn't, wasn't working out the way they wanted it to. All right. So you want to, um, you want to stir up some controversy here? Yeah, let's do it. You were, t you were mentioning to me that Marty, our occasional, uh, uh, more, more than occasional, I don't know. I could barely call him a guest. He's practically another co-host of the show. He's a co-host as far as I'm concerned. We just don't give him the credit. Yeah. KC1, CWF Chicken with Fries. He, where did he do this? You're saying he started a thread maybe on QRZ about please copy? Oh, no. There was um. oh, yeah. So in Facebook, uh, and I Facebook, don't remember if it was okay. on his group in Facebook somewhere, there was a thread where he started, uh, he was grousing a little bit about um, about poor operating procedures in, uh, on field day. and uh, It's got a you know, lifetime. about. He's got a lifetime of, of looking forward to that because it's not going to change. Yeah, and I thought the same thing when I, when I read the thread. Yeah, but was what like, was he grousing we, about? Uh, you know, the stuff, the all the extra, you know, ums and ifs and highs and please copy. We are. And, we are, you are, they are. Yeah, exactly. And um, Good luck in the contest. Know, exactly. Oh, have a great field day. You know, and this is so-and-so and, um, and, you know, there were in, in the thread and in, in Facebook, there were, there were definitely other, um, folks that would like to have the pure operating of, you know, this is my call. This is my exchange. I got your exchange seven, three yeah. and move on. And there were other folks that like, you know, this isn't really a contest <laughs> and I'll keep saying that <laughs> it's a I'll contest keep saying that over to, it's not a contest. It's a contest it's, because you I, keep score and yeah, there's a winner. Uh, yeah, I guess. That's a but contest. Yeah, all right. So it's a contest. It's not really a contest. It's kind of a contest. It's two minutes and, and one. Um, that's right. That's right. It's um it's a floor wax it's, and a dessert top. It's a it's a camp out. It's a it's a emergency exercise. And yes, it's a contest. It's a contest. Um and, and you know, I know when I sat down and so my friend um WA six R E is the one who um brought the uh, PSK thirty one station and he was really encouraging me to sit down. At first, I wasn't even going to do it. I thought, oh, I'm not really, I'm not really part of the group, and and there was nobody running it. I think he wanted a break because he had been there for 24 hours. So I sat down and do it. Yep. And you know, even there in his exchanges, uh, he was using FL Digi, and you know, macros, pre, pre right? can macros. Yeah, put pre can macros. And you know, um, to Marty's point, um, the macros were a little bloated, not a lot. Um, <laughs> You know, There's you, no you excuse for that. They're things. macros. Well, you know, and I, and again, it's like, um, you know, we're there to have fun and, and, um, kind of show the public what we're doing. I hope, you know, and there was public, we saw people walking in and out and, you know, people were showing them around. And so if it, if it isn't perfect, is it okay? I guess so. Well, it's um, field day. Yeah. Um, so this is never going to go away. I, I will cop to, um, the same feelings that, that, you know, I would really like uh, people to have sharper, faster procedures in field day. It, if I'm trying to rack up contacts, I'm irritated by the extra verbiage. Sure. So to to illustrate, 
Let's have a field day contact. CQ field day, CQ field day, Kilo November 4, Alpha Quebec field day. KN4AQ, W0DHG. Okay, so you made a mistake already. You gave my okay. call sign. You don't need to. Okay. Well, but I got to know. Well, all right, you're right. You're right. If you're calling, I don't have yeah. to. Let's try, okay, we'll try this again. And, okay. And, and I'm going to keep stopping you until we get it right. Till we get it, till CQ, we get it perfect. CQ field day, CQ field day. Kilo November 4, Alpha Quebec field day. Whiskey Zero, Delta Hotel Golf. Whiskey Zero, Delta Hotel Golf. Thank you. Uh, one, let's see, what was that? One Charlie, North Carolina. Whiskey Zero, Delta Hotel Golf Stop. is. You don't need to right. give your call sign. I don't, I don't. Okay. All right. So um, uh, one Echo Lima Alpha X-Ray. Yeah. You probably want to toss in a Roger or something to, to indicate you copied me. Okay. Okay. QSL, one Echo Lima Alpha X-Ray. Thank you. Kilo November 4, Alpha Quebec Field Day. Okay, let's put it all together. CQ Field yep. Day, CQ Field Day. Kilo November 4, Alpha Quebec Field Day. Whiskey Zero, Delta Hotel Golf. Whiskey Zero, Delta Hotel Golf. Thank you, uh, One Charlie, North Carolina. QSL, One Echo, Lima Alpha X-Ray. Thank you. Kilo November 4, Alpha Quebec Field Day. Boom. Okay, now, now let's do it like everybody else does. CQ okay. field day, CQ field day, CQ field day. This is KN4AQ, field day. KN4AQ. This no, you weren't supposed whiskey. to get the call sign right because I went KN4AQ. Oh. So you, you you knew what it was, but not if I just go KN4AQ. Yeah, okay. All right. KN4, <laughs> wait, can, uh, can I get your call again? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go down that road anymore. Okay. Although we did a um, we did a simulated uh, contest at a, a club meeting many many years ago that Jeff put mm -hmm. together, and he had the guy giving his phonetics. His his call sign was uh, uh, Kilo Delta Four um, Delta Bravo Tango, and the field day the the phonetics that he gave was Kilo Delta Four Dango Bango Tango. There you go. We enjoyed yeah, that. Uh, the, yeah, the, one we hear, hear hear a lot is uh, Japan, America, Mexico. There's a guy in the in the local area. Japan, America, Mexico. Well, that is and, sort of an alternate version yeah. of phonetics that DXers tend to like to use because people who are not conversant with English all that well, they can get the names They'll of the, the countries the names better. Of the than, countries. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, the the additional verbiage is please copy and. Um, we Please. are, yeah, we are, yeah. they are, you are, mm -hmm. uh, and if, if you want to sharpen up your field day exchanges, um, the reason, I think the reason that people do that is because they're not contesters. Field day is the contest, is the event that they participate in, in any given year, and they, and they don't run other contests. Mm -hmm. So they, that's what they hear everybody else do. And so they emulate what they're hearing, and you'll hear a lot more people do that than you will the crisp contest exchange, but it will drive the contesters bananas, and me a little bit, even though I'm not a contester. Well, and, and I'm sure, and you know, that, that I'll, I'll fully admit, you know, I work one contest a year, and that's field day. Wait, wait, field day's not a contest. But anyway, so that's that's the one I get out for, right? We, we really build up to that, and we do a lot of other public service, but it's not... Nothing is like contest like like that. Yeah. You know, well, your other public service, you wouldn't put up with a lot of extra verbiage, or do you? you no, I mean we we there were much more precise and and particular, and and you know I know everybody sneaks it in because you're not operating all the time, uh, but we're not rag chewing along the way. You know, you've got a message to send, you get them on the on the line, and you send the message, and there may be a thank you and a whatever yeah. along with it. Um, but it's not like precise contest exchanges. Um, the, the other thing that I noticed in my own attitude to some extent was the difference between 20 meters and 40 meters, which were similar, trying, you know, they're noisy, they're busy, they're crowded, and 15 meters where it's quiet and there's elbow room most of the time. And more casual because why not 
You're not going to mm-hmm. hold a 110 contact an hour rate on 15 meters. Right. Most of the time, maybe at the beginning of an opening or something, but although some of my best rates have been on 15 meters, uh, it, so it got, it, it got more casual and that, that was okay with me. Mm-hmm. And, and it, maybe it's better to put some of us less skilled operators on those, on those frequencies. And some of the videos that I saw looking around, you know, 40 meters at, you know, certain parts of the day, there were two or three guys on one frequency, you know, all across America. And depending on the quality of the radio and the antenna you had, you could hear them all at the same time, even though they probably couldn't hear each other. Yes, it was just wall, wall to wall to wall. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, and it definitely makes it hard then. And, and it's probably frustrating for guys like Marty and l- like yourself to listen to the, we are, and please copy. And, you know, well, I've, Pretty much Have a given great up. field day, <laughs> seven threes. Yeah, I've pretty much given up the idea that that we're going to change the field day culture. Yeah, um, of uh, of operating, uh, and I don't really operate other contests, so you know, it's, I don't. I'm not going to. I'm not sure how I learned good contest operating. I haven't been to contest university, and I don't know where I got the attitude that everybody else should. Do it better. I did have one moral victory, though. My um, former executive producer, uh, Cliff Broughton, uh, W4FT, uh, would operate with me on uh, 80 meters at night on uh, on field day from our club. And we did that for many years in a row. And kind of went into the GOTA uh, end of things. But I, I would, for years, have the 80-meter station, which eh, quiet during the day and then noisy but busy all night long. And Cliff was very much in the, uh, please copy, we are, you are, they are, uh, have a good field day, good luck in the contest, 73. Um, and I would beat on him to not do that. And then one year, suddenly it dawned on him that he could get a faster rate if he didn't do that. And then he got mad at everybody else who was doing it, who was slowing right. him down. So Cliff, if you're right. watching here, I won. There you go. Well, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe the uh, the million dollar uh, solution we have is to write the book on good field day operating procedures. I think it's been done. And they nobody's. get the L- get the ARL to sell it for us, <laughs> and nobody, I know nobody's going to buy it. <laughs> no, nobody's going to read it for sure. Yeah, that's probably true too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, that's that's nobody cares. They yeah. operate field day the way they hear everybody else operating field day, and. None, you know, none of, I, I can't think of anything. I th- even a, 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 a head headline cover article in QST is not going to change that. They could splash. This issue is all about correct field day operating procedure. And that wouldn't, that wouldn't do it. No, nope. there's just, it, it there's no way. And you know, it, it's amateur, it's, assume- it's amateur hour. That's what it yes. is. And well, and you know, it, it probably good for the good for the event because you get everybody out, and you you know, you, you there are masses of people, and and I saw driving around. I see in the backyard. I saw several different parts of the city where people had their fiberglass um, military masks up and wires on it, you know, sticking up in the backyard where you don't usually see them, and it looked very clearly, you know, temporary setup for field day, and um, so people are participating, and um, you know, and I I know. You know, Marty was a little frustrated in his uh, in his thread with all of the the you know terrible operating stuff, and and I'll admit every time I called um, CQ on the macro that I had, and it wasn't my computer, uh, there was extra stuff in there that didn't need to be there, and even I saw it, and I wasn't going to change it because it wasn't my you know wasn't my rig, wasn't my setup. Um, but I saw it, but it didn't bug me enough to to say, hey, this is just bad <laughs> um and i guess you know you go look at the cw operators and I, you know i'm you know up to eight or ten letters i'm still working on on it and i'll never you know hit 20 min- 20 words a minute i think who knows um i know those guys are probably in the zone and doing 100 percent of the right thing because they're you know extra letters is you know really wasted time yeah um but a lot of those guys aren't the ones that are going to socialize with the single sideband people or, or anybody else. And so nobody's going to, nobody's going to get any mentoring for them. 
Well, if you want to become the least popular person in your radio club, right at the June at the June meeting next year, yeah. the field day meeting where everyone's talking about their field day operation, I uh, volunteer to get up in front and, and teach correct proper operating procedure for field day, and say, and, and, and this is the way we were all going to operate. Damn it. I'm going to enforce that. Maybe if you're the field day chairman, then you can try to do that. Good luck with that. I will. <laughs> so we, let me, we, put, uh, we put scripts out in, in fact, and I think at, um, I think at that site, there were some scripts out and I'll have to go back and look to see if I got a picture of it to see how much extra verbiage is in those scripts. All right. So remember that audio that was sneaking in a little bit ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's let me, watch uh, it. Yeah. What I, what I was getting at here, um, that's not the one that I want to see. Oh, uh, she's uh, missing. Yeah. Where'd it go? Oh, oh, this was, this was you. This was your, this uh, is us. Yeah. This, yeah, this was, was this actually was a couple years old, but we had a really good piece. Okay. And this short, so let's take a look at it. Southern California okay. ham radio operators put their skills to the test today. W0DHG, WA6BHA, you are loud and clear, sir, and summoned. Today's event at Pierce College in Woodland Hills is part of a weekend-long demonstration for the Los Angeles Amateur Radio Emergency Service. The group works with various law enforcement agencies and hospitals all over Southern California to provide emergency communications when disasters like an earthquake knock out cell phone and internet services. Well, she is all Southern California ham radio operators put their skills to the test. <laughs> Okay. I had more hair then and it was darker. So uh, I was concentrating on figuring out how to, uh, oh, is that you? That's the back of your head? That's the back of my head. Okay. I was concentrating on trying to make the picture work properly. So, yeah. Yeah, so it was Did fun. Ever, and that was, ever get your face? Uh, yeah, up further there's my face. Uh, towards the end. Uh, let's see, that's Dean and Ruzi. Right at the end, I'm talking, to, that, that's me. Okay, yeah, now I recognize in the you. In the black shirt there. You know what? what's um, uh, remarkable about that is uh, that that is a major metro television station. Yeah. Big ABC Los Angeles TV station. Yep. And those are yep. hard to get. Yep. Us, we, us, we media, markets, yeah, us media markets. Yes, media markets. We have a more success in dragging out Field day contacts, mm -hmm. field day contacts, uh, field day media, mm -hmm. especially TV stations. I can just about always get one when I was doing the PIO thing. <clears throat> um, but uh, very hard to do in the in the big cities because there's so much other news. There is there, and it must have been a slow news day. And it, it, we we had a couple inside contacts, and the guy came, and it was just it was just the cameraman came. Yeah. Um, there wasn't anybody else and, uh, he actually hung around with a, he must've hung around for two hours and we fed him lunch and, <laughs> you know, he did a whole bunch of B roll. Um, and it worked out. We were so excited that, uh, that we had that piece on. All right. So what I wanted to look at here was, uh, ARL has a list of, um, media, um, they call the media hits and um, this is their page for June, 2017 field day is the activity that generates um, ham radio. There's the button I want the, the generates ham radio media. Uh, yeah. We get a little bit of media coverage throughout the year, but, but June field day, everybody manages to get some media. So they've got it, uh, uh, broken out by state. Okay. And you can see that there's a lot of, a lot of hits. There wasn't a lot of video, but I, that's what I pulled out. So, um, let's just look at a couple of, uh, TV stories, um, from this year's field day. It's already right been on the air. Into a pilot program oh, the wait, that's company to help people get around that city. Lot more oh, oh. Uh, okay. It's this, is there to I'm going to, how this program would work. Alyssa. I, I got to figure out which one is playing. It's the one with the mic. It's the one with the speaker. That one. That one's playing. But it doesn't look like it's playing. If you look on the tab, you see how there's a little speaker on the tab. That, that's what tells you there's something playing. Yeah. There. Okay. So that's the one that was playing. Although I, I couldn't see anything play. All right. Let's try yep. this guy again here. Well, Cool J said he couldn't live without his radio for very <laughs> different his radio for very. Now wait a minute. I need to get the beginning of that because this they're trying to make a connection to ham radio that just doesn't connect. Stop. LL Cool J said he couldn't live without his radio. 
for very different reasons. <laughs> That's true for members of the Clay County Amateur Radio Emergency Service and the Orange Park Amateur Radio Club. Now, they have a field day coming up this weekend, and to talk more about it is Scott Roberts and Joe Bass, and they're going to explain what those organizations they're going, are. LL Cool J, what, what are you talking about? Thanks for joining us. Yeah. All right, so let's get to the basics. You guys are amateur radio operators. What does that mean? Well, amateur radio is a group of people that come together. They can talk across town. They can talk across the country, uh, all around the world. It can even go into outer space. You can talk to the International Space Station. Oh, really? And all of this is you, without using wires to connect cell phones and things like that. Uh, it's a service as well, not just a hobby, but the service is where we can be a lifeline for communication when all other forms like cell phones go down and people can't communicate. We might do that in a hurricane setting or any time where there's a catastrophe. Well, that's totally appropriate, especially now that we enter hurricane season. So you guys are an integral part of keeping people connected when, like you said, all other forms of communication are down. I'm dating myself, but what are, are ham radio operators and you guys kind of in the same vein? Uh, we are what are called ham radio operators, okay. though nobody really knows where the term <laughs> ham came from, uh, but we wear it as a badge of honor. Um, but what's going on with it now really isn't like the old days. There are a lot of new technologies that we use, uh, robotics, we can send images, uh, we can send emails. Um, I've even played around and sent uh, tweets really? with amateur radio. All right. All right, so let's talk about field day. What exactly does that entail? Well, field day is the largest gathering um, nationwide of Look amateur at that radio go box operators. that they brought. And basically what happens is we set yeah, up that's our a, equipment. That's quite we, a box. Um, test everything that we're going to do. It's it's a contest. Okay, this is the guy uh, that, uh, uh, make as many that got the possible, interview hooked up. Uh, He's the public information test officer. Our equipment, test mm -hmm. our ability to set up in different situations without and wires. it looks like he's power. an assistant um, we run emergency coordinator. solar power and, and operate that way. Now, besides field day, what other kind of uh, training do you guys do? Uh, one of the things that we do to train is we might support local events um, like the Donna Run or the MS-150. Uh, we work with Florida Striders for their uh, road races where they run, and we provide communication support all along those. In fact, one of the areas, not here particularly in Jacksonville, but where amateur radio helped was in the Boston bombing. Okay. There were amateur radio operators all along the Boston Marathon that then could help when all the other communications were failing and they could pass information for people to know how to stay safe during that. Oh, that's so cool. Now, our time's kind of running short. You brought a big toy here, which I guess <laughs> is your normal. And uh, we heard a little beep earlier, but can we try to connect with somebody? Sure, let's see what we can do here. K4AMF, KK4ECR. I'm thinking of like CB's Breaker Breaker 1-9, that kind of thing. Oh! K4AMF, KK4ECR. KK4ECR, K4AMF, go ahead. Morning, Andy. Can I get a signal report and uh, your station situation? Affirmative. You are 5-9, full quieting into the repeater. Station is operating on commercial grid power. Current temperature is 89 degrees, 70% humidity. Wind 7 out of east southeast. Where is he located? He's actually in Orange Park. Okay. Um, we're, t we're actually talking um, to an antenna here that is hitting a repeater in Orange Park, and then he's responding back the same way. All right, all right. So the competition is actually a 24-hour competition. It's uh, from 2 p.m. to 2 p.m., Saturday to Sunday. And so anybody can come attend. Okay, so uh, I think they did a pretty good job there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They, some of the things that I note uh, when... Uh, when I'm thinking about doing things like that, are uh, you need your 30 second elevator speech when somebody says, "What is amateur radio?" Mm -hmm. Have you got one? Probably. <laughs> um, you know, when people ask me about amateur radio, um, I, you know, I, I will I will admit it's it's an old thing. It's been around for a long time, and um, uh, mostly what I focus on is the fact that I can communicate with other people without any other infrastructure. I don't need the internet. Um, I don't need the cell phone towers. I don't need the phone wiring. I can talk to people either locally or even all across the country with just the equipment that I have on battery power without any infrastructure. Okay. I'll tear that apart. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Actually, I need to work on it. I know. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll tell you mine. And, uh, yeah, yeah. 
and I've, I've listened to a few others and, and, um, and, and failed to incorporate them into mine when I thought they had some good points. Mm-hmm. Ham radio, amateur radio is a two way radio hobby and service. It's a hobby because we play with our two way radios for fun, which most of the time we just like enjoy playing with it. It's a service because we're licensed by the FCC and we provide service in emergencies and for public events with our communications capabilities. And that's the end mm-hmm. that can lead to more questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know so if that's, that. I don't know if that's the perfect way to do it or not, but, um, but most hams do get tongue tied and tangled up mm-hmm. in the details mm-hmm. and they'll, you know, you know, they'll talk about the ATV and the satellites and stuff. And those are right. good, good for later on, but not, not for the first blush, I think. So, but I've, I've yet to succeed in convincing a lot of people that do it my way. Okay. Well, you know, it, it wasn't bad. I think actually it was pretty good. I'm going to steal some bits and pieces. Probably yeah. should work on that, they're, they're, that together. I, I think I've heard better in, um, but I didn't, you know, I didn't write it down and say, mm-hmm. you know, commit it to memory. Um, but I've, but I've re- most often heard worse. You know, sure. They didn't do too bad. They also didn't use too much jargon. Very difficult for us to de-jargonize ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the word repeater meant nothing to anybody watching that yep. show, including the reporter, who was mm-hmm. very casual. I don't think that was mm-hmm. a news show. I'm not sure what that came out of, but it, you know, it's a weekend show of some kind. And that was an advanced uh, program that wasn't done at field day. And that's a right. great great thing to get if you can wangle a uh, something in advance, and maybe you can drive a few people to come out to your visit your site. So we're um, just about out of time. I've got a podcasters meeting to go to. There's a local cool. local meetup for North Carolina podcasters. They shouldn't have called it North Carolina podcasters. North Carolina is a huge state. I only saw, we spent all day driving around last weekend, two days driving around. I only saw, well, a good portion of the state, but not anywhere near all of it. And this is just folks in the triangle area, the Raleigh Durham area. They, mm-hmm. they should not have called it because Charlotte is two and a half hours away. And nobody from Charlotte comes to this North Carolina podcasters meetup. Right. Well, you, we were in Charlotte uh, a couple days ago and, and Gwen was like, Oh, is Gary here? We're in North Carolina. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Gary's, Gary's nowhere near here. He's in the state. We're all in the same state, but yeah, yep. two hour drive. Yeah. Be, Two hours like if you drive going fast. down to San Diego. Yeah, exactly. So, yep. um, are there uh, other amateur radio podcasters at this uh, meetup? No, I'm I'm the ham, um, mm-hmm. but it's a wide variety of uh, different program topics and a wide variety of um, um, experience and ability. Uh, we get folks that have been doing. I think I've got the highest episode count. There's one other guy that does a podcast on competitive shooting that is up in, in my area of uh, episode count um, and longevity. Um, the other folks that have been doing it for a while, they're hitting the hundred or so and they're, they're typically doing one a week. So they've been going for a couple of years and there's folks that are epi- at episode six. Episode seven apparently is the make or break in podcasting. <laughs> I would think it would be that double digits once you hit ten. Well, I, just the, a good number. yeah, the the apocryphal stories that I hear are just yeah, you hit seven, and if you get beyond that, then you, maybe you're going to keep going. Okay. Seven is where people give up. Um, so you're an Elmer in a way there too, huh? so, sort of. And I, you know, I also understand the technology better than than most other people do. So I'm, I'm usually that's what tonight's going to be a lot about is how to how to do things, and some of that'll be the technology. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's two other guys that do uh, some form of video and everybody else is doing the easy audio. Just doing audio. Yeah. Easy mm-hmm. audio. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of fun to see all these folks that have, um, the chutzpah, the audacity, the ego to put themselves out there and do a podcast. They'll also look at my pod, my numbers, which I think are pathetic you know, when, when some of my best shows get three or 4,000 views, 
yeah, I got a few outliers. I got a few in the fifty, sixty thousand range, but most of the the shows, the good ones, the in, in terms of numbers, not the good shows in terms of being a good show, but the good shows in terms of numbers, are in the uh, three to five thousand range. Uh, the stuff we did at uh, Dayton, that Marty and I did, um, the tour stuff was popular. Mm-hmm. But a lot of our MCOM extras, they haven't cracked a thousand yet. And yet the folks at, at, at these uh, meetups think that you, know, you do a thousand. Wow, you're, you're awesome. <laughs> you're doing great. So it's perspective. I expect yep. more. Expect we'll more keep, of we'll keep, you, the audience. All right, well, we'll keep working on them and hopefully we'll, we'll bring them all along. And if, yeah. uh, if I don't kill it all while you're on vacation. <laughs> Got a ways to go. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do, we'll do uh, some online tutorials. Okay. Um, and the MCOM extras, uh, I would like to see all of the MCOM folks, everybody interested to latch onto that. And that would, should boost the numbers up into the thousands, the multiple thousands. Cause there's a lot of hams that like that. They just don't know that we're doing yeah. that yet. So as, as I ran out to the field day sites, uh, you know, I talk about doing the MCOM extra. I've never heard of it. How, mm-hmm. how do we let them know? Uh, yeah, you know, I I talked it up a little bit. There were uh, there were a couple guys that said, "Oh yeah, I'd seen it," so it must have been part of our thousand views. And uh, I actually got an email or two from um, a couple of the guys in our Aries group said, "Hey, it was a good job with that last show." Um, but I, I don't know how to get it out there to the rest of them. I definitely I wore my I didn't wear my ARL EC badge when I went around to field day. I was wearing my ham radio now <laughs> one. Anybody said I had what's the camera. That? Um. No, not really so much. I think they were more just trying to figure out what my name was. <laughs> um, you know, and I think that's why we that's why we wear those name badges, right? Um, the name is on we'll there. Just, we'll keep at it. It is on there. It's smaller letters than your call sign. But Here, um, is your badge? It's disappeared from hanging behind you. Or, oh, there it is. Oh, that's my head's behind it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Your it's name. There. It's the 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 video quality is probably not quite good enough to read it. No, there, that's right. It's magnetic. It's, uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah it's, it's magnetic. That's good enough. It's not too bad. I think I had I had one guy ask about it, but otherwise they were you know mostly they were just excited that somebody came that wasn't part of their club and was interested in operating and and wanted to talk to them and even take some pictures and and whatever. Yeah, that's that what good. Carl discovered. Uh, well, I, I don't think he discovered it because he's done this now several years in a row. He's been I think he's in his third year or fourth year of uh, being section manager that the clubs like the attention, especially um, mm-hmm. the Western part. Cause we're in the Eastern third of North Carolina, the very Western edge of the Eastern third of North Carolina. So it's always awkward. Mm-hmm. I need an elevator pitch about where we are in the state. Cause it's a very yeah. wide state. Um, so, so he deliberately wanted to go West where they don't see a lot of attention because Raleigh's the capital and has had the section manager for, um, just about ever since I moved here in 1990, and one time it moved, the section manager was from Wilmington, which is on the mm-hmm. coast, is even farther east. So they haven't had a top official in the western part of the state. And so he deliberately wanted to get out there and um, and just, you know, meet people. You see them at ham fests and stuff, but uh, they have a little more time to spend on something a little bit casual. So, um, yeah, they like seeing that attention. My attention with the video and stuff, it's <laughs> different. Well, and, and you know what? I experienced that as well because um, they were excited and happy to talk to me and whatever. When our section manager, no, actually it was our um, our director, uh, Dick Norton, who's the regional director, showed up at the AC6VV. Um, everybody gets really excited. and Oh, is everybody doing everything right? Is everybody ready? And, <laughs> can I get ready? He's going to go around with his pad and get everybody's name and... Um, the white glove, make sure there's not dust on everything. Yeah, he's not that, not quite that um, overboard with that. And and I and I can recall from when we ran um, our site at Pierce College, it, it's the same kind of thing. He shows up, you know. It's like, you know, I'm kind of, and I don't, don't take this the wrong way. I'm kind of the wannabe celebrity, right? We've got our show, and and we're gonna try to popularize it, and they're excited about that. But when the boss comes to town, <laughs> your director comes to town, it was a whole different thing. It was like. It literally was like their boss was there for an inspection kind of thing. And everybody, you know, got, you know, and, and he goes around and he writes names down and he's very nice and talks to everybody. Um, and, and there isn't any reason to get worried about it, but it was a very different kind of thing. 
and I mean, even um, when you're sitting at work in your yeah. cubicle, you got a cubicle? I are have you, a cubicle. Are you a cube farmer? I'm a cube farmer. And so the boss comes around, you know, he's sticking his nose over the cubicles. Do you sit up a little straighter? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> but you know, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm part of a small team and, um, I actually have, I have a, um, a big cubicle with like a seven foot wall. So he can't really stick his head over the wall. He has to kind of come in the door. Um, practically an office. Kind of. Um, and, and he'll plop down in his chair and I don't, you know, yeah, I'll pay attention because I know he wants something, but, uh, I know I don't sit upright and I, you know, I don't hide the screen of, you know, Facebook or whatever it is that I might, watching, might or might not be doing at work at the time. Watching ham the radio, ham radio now. now. Yeah. The ham radio. Oh no. If I'm watching ham radio now or, or other podcasts while I'm eating lunch, I don't care. I just leave it on. Yeah. I may pause it so I don't want to miss any content, but I don't do that during like work hours. So, so you've got a, a, a good working relationship with him. It's not. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's four of us on our team. He's not playing boss, but you know, there's a lot of people that have that, that going on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I've been working for the guys I'm working for, for, uh, about 18 months now. The boss that I had before that, cause I've been there almost five years. Yeah. It was a whole different story. Totally different story. Then you had to straighten up and. Oh yeah. Straighten up. Fly right. <laughs> oh, they're coming. Oh, they're ready. Put all the contraband away. All right. Well, I got to get, uh, got to get going. So let's right, wrap this sucker up. Ham Radio Now brought to you by the viewers. It's your show. No, it's not your show. It's my show. I d we do what we want. We don't, we don't listen to you guys. You, yes. I, you know, I wish, you, you I wish all those guys would tell us what they want to see. I'm working on a DMR guy, but I haven't heard a lot of other feedback about what you want. So Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. You can tell David what you want. Don't tell me because I'm going to yeah, do what I want. Your... <laughs> and we'll make it happen. Really, we'll make it happen. We well, can. Yeah, especially when I go on vacation and David takes over. There you go. We'll be doing smoke, at, smoke and solder episodes. Asking people, <laughs> yay, <laughs> watch, the, watch the numbers skyrocket. Yeah. Asking people what they want to see is a, a typical thing a lot of shows do, um, especially when they're just getting started. And it's something I never really wanted to get, get into because I don't want to do the shows other people want to see. I want to do the shows I want to do. You want to do. And I Tell think me I've what got, you want to do, Gary, and we'll work on getting those people too. Yeah, it's, it's a Steve Jobs kind of thing. Don't ask people what they want. Make good products and they will come buy them. It's worked for Steve Jobs and Apple. Not working for me so well. You know, how's that working out for you? Not so well. You're getting, you're getting your thousands of views, so... Yeah, and, and we have really loyal viewers, loyal to the point of sending a lot of money. So there you go. They and they're not asking for me to do other other stuff. They're happy to get their content. And it was Glenn uh, Casey One H O X who who uh, drove this program by saying yesterday, no Facebook Live in a while. What's you know what's going on? You had also mentioned I've been quiet. It's, it's yeah, because, I, wor I worried. You know, I worried about you. Kind of fell off the the field day. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were in in non cell phone territory quite a bit, yeah. and it, otherwise just really busy, just doing stuff. Of course. Um, and then I come back to all of this footage that I've got to edit, so I'm not really doing anything. Uh, and so you mentioned that, and Glenn, poor Glenn. Besides not being able to be on this show because just didn't work out very well. Um. He he says yesterday this this was this was his giant killer line. Nothing, no no new Facebook Live or anything from Ham Radio now. I guess I'm going to go watch W five KUB. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Tom. I don't really mean that, but then I sort of do. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we left him with W five KUB, and you know, so I felt we got to put something out here before I get the editing done. There you go. Ham Radio Now brought to you by you, hamradionow.tv. Our Irvins are looking at each other. You know, mine is not looking at yours. Yours is looking at mine. I can turn him. No, I don't turn him. No, you can turn him. I can bring this one. There you go. It's very hard to do to figure out which directions things are yep. going. Yep. I mess that up every time. Yeah, I try to point to something at the bottom of the screen and say, look for Arvin and... No, he's going to be over here. There, yeah. He's going to be there. There. Yeah. Arvin yeah. is there. <laughs> Amradionow.tv. 
I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. And I'm David Goldenberg, W0DHG. Over. And out. And now you know, a few people have kept on watching. The thing goes, boom, ARVN. It's the last vestige of the amateur radio video news thing. Yep. As if I was a network of some kind. And, um, and a, few pe- a few people have watched past that and discovered uh-huh. that we always throw in something extra. Almost always. Like the Marvel movies, except once in a while they don't. People complain. What? No extra scene? And, um, and now I'm starting to feel the pressure to have something good. <laughs> At the end? At the end. To, yeah. You know, a little Easter egg to let people watch a little bit longer. What we got to do is is get something really great in the beginning before we've worn through it all and then cut that out and put it at the end. Yeah, and I have done that. I have done that uh, <laughs> once in a while. So We stay yeah, we stay through every movie until the bitter end waiting for that stuff. Are you not familiar with Run P? Um, I am familiar with it, but I don't want to know. I just want to sit and relax. Plus, you know, I'm kind of in the industry, so I think all those people who are in the credits, they should, you know, I should look at their names, I think. Jeff, AC4ZO, uh, sort of is a uh, homage to me, who is sort of in that industry, uh, would sit and watch the credits and um, thinking that it, they were important to me. What, and, and you didn't you didn't care? Eh, and if there was another scene, I would check Run P and see if there was, if there was some stuff coming up. And if not... Okay, that's, a, that's a good idea. I might do that. Yeah. If, if there wasn't, um, I, w- I would not watch all the credits. You wouldn't stick around. Yeah, because it's pretty much tedious. It's yeah. impressive to see how many people you're sending checks to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your you're, you're $15 uh, goes to all of those people in a yeah. big way. Um, I don't think I've been involved in a production of anything that went beyond about 10 or 15 people. And most of the mm-hmm. time, it was four or five. Mm-hmm. And here at Ham Radio now, this program is me and you. It's us. Yeah, that's the credit. And sometimes Marty. Yep. But, and, uh, and everybody appears on camera. About the only time I've had someone off camera is uh, a couple of Tapper conferences. Mm-hmm. Um, I had had a um, cameraman. Um, Somebody operating. A couple, couple of years when I brought the uh, the Wirecast system, this, uh, this thing here, I took it to the uh, – to the uh, – uh, conference and recorded switched camera, which meant I couldn't run a camera. So I needed two people running cameras and Cliff had been to, to some with me. Uh, now I just set three cameras up fixed and I run one myself and, um, make it. Do you run them all and, 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 uh, edit at the end or you're switching them during the. Program? No, I don't, I don't bring this cause then I couldn't run, I couldn't run a camera and got it. And this thing so, at the same time. So that, that's, is that, that's go, go back to that other shot. So that is the Wirecast. That's a, a PC in a box kind of thing there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I bought this thinking that I would be taking it to uh, conferences and ham fests and stuff. And, uh-huh. um, it's and, and I did that a few times. Uh-huh. But it, because uh, this is not a good form factor for, um, for doing the show here. This, this screen is a little hard to see. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be sitting in a tower computer. It could be done on a laptop. And that uh, and that's wire. That's what Wirecast sells, or is that just another box you found in a box and and then you put their software on it? A company called One Beyond. Okay. Packages right. up <clears throat> hardware and based around Wirecast being the software. I so see. um so yeah, and it was around seven thousand dollars or so. That's I mean it's a good beefy PC and, and all that. But it's a little too fragile to, to be toting around like that. Um, it, it be, because it's all sitting in a fairly enclosed box, um, it, its temperature management isn't that good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it tends to overheat unless the room is pretty cool. So I had it at a ham fest one time where um, I was in an unair conditioned ro- uh, wing of a building. And it was getting up into the 90s. This thing was just hollering at me, over temp, over temp. Okay, I'm going to burn know. up. Shut down now. And right. uh, I didn't, but uh, it was uncomfortable to see doing and, that. 
And there's no no a number of extra fans that you could point at that thing to make it worthwhile. Uh, maybe, but yeah, I'm just leaving it here. And, and it would be smart would be for me to take the guts out and put it in a tower, mm. and uh, and put it in another part of the room where it's not making so much noise. The the Heil keeps you from hearing most of the noise. Mm-hmm. And, and when I do the audio for from uh, for the edited version with titles and stuff, then uh, I do some gating. And so when we stop talking, the, the sound goes, it's very quiet. Um, but uh, the folks look, listening on Facebook will hear a little bit of fan noise in the background. Yeah, I can hear a little, when you're, when, when you're quiet, I hear a little hiss. Yeah. And I know there's nothing, nothing really going on in my space here, so I'm sure it's all coming from you. Yep. So. That's what it is. Yeah. And I mean, if I pointed the mic at it, you'd hear it. A lot more because it's it's in the quiet zone. I mean, these these are good. I can get it to swivel. You pretty much disappear when you're over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, well, that's. I'm, I mean, that's to the, I, talking to the side. Of, I'll talk to the side of the mic where you can see me talking yeah. to the side of the mic, and there's nothing. Yeah. It really well, that, goes that's away. that's the the beauty of of the um, the dial microphones. How how good is that ATR that you're talking on? Go off to so the side. You, so here I'm on the front here and now I'm on the side and, and I'm behind it and now I'm on the side and now I'm in front of it. I yeah. don't think it it's has not, a lot. It's not of, the Heil, but it, no, there's a lot. You, you, when, there? You, okay. when you look at playback, you, you'll hear a lot. Um, I will have some compression going on mm-hmm. that will mitigate that from both you and me when mm-hmm. uh, people watch this part, but uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good. I'm going to get I mean, one you, of those to put over there where the – the uh, editing system is. So uh-huh. I, I'll sound better to folks I'm talking to on Skype because now I'm talking into the camera mic and I'm doing one of those. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm talking into my camera mic and uh, how does it, it sound? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this, was, this worked out really well. And, you know, you, I, I, I put the earbud right into the bottom of it. So now, are you hearing me come through. out of that or just yourself or where do you hear no, me? No, I hear you. I hear you. So when you, when you, so when you hook this up to Skype, Skype says this is both the mic and the speaker. Ah. So if you put the earbud in the bottom, I don't know if I can show it to you. So in the bottom of it, there's, um, where is it? There it is. Yeah, so there's it shows XLR. up. Like, oh, there's an XLR jack, which I'm not using. There's the USB, and there's a headphone uh, jack. And so when you put the headphone jack in it, um, it routes all the sound from Skype through that. So I hear everything through just the earbud here. Excellent. And it works real, real yeah. nice. And there's actually a little uh, dial volume control. So I can, I actually control the whole PC's volume on that dial up and down. I got to get me one of them. <laughs> get you one of them. Deal. Amazon will have it th- to you tomorrow if you have the Prime or Prime maybe the next day. Day, day in it. Two day. It and two it's day. like, what was it, about 70 bucks or so? Yeah, I think so. It's 70, 80 bucks. I don't think yeah. it was much more than that. It was, it this was totally reasonable. Three and a quarter or so. So. Yeah. Well, that's when you when you said I got to get a better mic. I was like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? <laughs> and then you said, oh, try this one. And um, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, that's a good price. I could, I that's could totally do Audio that. Technica ATR twenty ten. For those of you that are wondering, there you go. And now we have given everybody at the end of the show a bonus episode. So Woo-hoo! there, there we go. Which Goodbye. was the AT twenty 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 ten ATR twenty ten. Pretty sure that's the twenty. It. The twenty twenty is ninety nine dollars, and I'm not sure what the advantage of that is. It's it, that one. That one has that front thing on it. Uh, that that one looks more like the Heil mic. Uh, twenty ten. No, oh, this is not. That's not the right one. Oh, uh, twenty one hundred. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. There you go. Sixty seven dollars prime. Two day ship to your door, Gary. And get the uh spend three dollars for the uh windscreen because it doesn't come with it. Three dollars sure that's a pretty good deal. This this windscreen is twenty bucks. Yeah. From Heil. If you get it through Amazon, that's an add on in the cart you can do yeah. for three bucks. Yeah. And the thing the thing that is is astronomically expensive is this cage that's holding it. It's a hundred okay. bucks. Yeah. And I looked, I looked when I got this to see if I could find one, you know, uh, Amazon has like a whole from, from $12 to a hundred dollars for those, but I couldn't find any that, that had the right. Cause this, 
this is not a standard. Um, it's a little uh, fatter than. Yeah, it's actually quite a bit fatter than than the. Uh, yeah, exactly. So what do you do? Is that a, is that an add-on that you have to the on the bottom of the mic that put, pipes it into the? Um, yeah, it's, oh, it's this, like a it's Sheinheiser. The, it's a that's like expensive. Sennheiser, yeah, it's a it's Sennheiser, the yeah. uh, transmitter. Which, uh, as long as we're talking about Arvin, um, and, and maybe you have noticed that there's a uh, spectrum, okay. there's a spectrum auction that's just been being conducted. Let me. Uh, so that'll fit on anything that runs an XLR. Right. And you have to have the receiver on the other side. Oh, I don't have any batteries in it. I'm going to try to turn it on, but there's no batteries in it. Um, yeah, so the uh, this is the transmitter, and it just it. plugs under the bottom of any uh, any microphone. Okay. So the Spectrum auction that they are just uh, concluding is selling off the 600 megahertz band. 600 megahertz was uh, TV channels approximately 35 through 50, somewhere mm -hmm. like that. So those TV channels are going away. With a little bit of history, um, the 800 megahertz band used to be the upper end of UHF TV, and that went away a long time ago. Then the 700 megahertz band became the upper end of UHF TV, and that went away a few years ago. And now the 600 megahertz band is the upper end of UHF TV, and that is going away. And all the TV stations are getting squashed into the 500 megahertz band. <clears throat> These wireless mics operate... Uh, across about five or six TV channels, they're you know synthesized, and you can set them, set the frequency. And back in the old days, you could never have two TV channels, two TV stations, on adjacent channels in a market because receivers couldn't separate them well enough. These days, with digital, you can. Uh, but there's usually within the six channels. This will cover. Uh, this is 626 to 662 megahertz. I can find something empty. And, uh, and connect to it. Um, but that band is being sold. And so I will have to buy new transmitters and new receivers. No, there's no way to modify them to right. get down to the 500 megahertz band. Uh, so that's going to be another $2,000 worth of stuff. Yeah. Those, cause those aren't, those aren't, you got a couple of two or three of those, right? And they're not cheap. Uh, yeah. Two, two of the, uh, uh, hand, hand mics, mm -hmm. two, of the body packs for lavaliers, transmitters, and uh, and a third, uh, and two receivers, and then a third receiver that I use at conferences. So uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, going to be expensive when that uh, band actually gets turned over. It's not going to happen for it, another couple of years. I was going to say how long how long does it take to um, to uh, turn that all over? Yeah, well they're pushing the TV stations out of it now, and. Um, you know, maybe next year, but probably two years is when they'll start populating it with new stuff because there's there's nothing built to use that spectrum yet. But that won't take long. So yeah. I got to oh, run. <laughs> I okay, gotta go. Run. I got, All right, I got sign off. 40 minutes to go and, and a 20 minute drive. All right. Have a so good one. We'll talk we, later. We have signed off. All we have to do, wait, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm still here. There I am. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah, address my uh, recording stuff. All we have to do now is say goodbye to Facebook Live. And they don't get an over and out. They just get a goodbye. So 7-3 Facebook. Goodbye. Bye-bye. And I'll turn off the recording and talk to you later. Okay, you got it.